Salutations, dear viewers. I am George from Ireland, and this is yet another video about some of the differences from the other side of the pond. So that's between the British Isles and the United States in particular, to a lesser extent, Canada. So what are some of the um, disagreements in um, the English language? Well, I remember when I was 23, I was sneezed and I was perplexed to hear an American colleague exclaim Gesundheit. I thought, what's that? She, she said, what, people don't say that here? I said, no, I never heard it in my life. Because as in, um, it means health in German. But uh, right, in British English, people would say, bless you if you sneeze. Um, so hoping that will bring um, health to you. In other languages, for example, French, it's santé. In um, Russian, it's budzdarov, like be healthy. I can't remember what is in the other ones. Um, ah, so another thing is, um, yeah, in the United States, people are saying happy holidays at Christmas because being a secular country, they felt they couldn't officially say Merry Christmas. You might not be a Christian, but there is some time off around there. Hanukkah um, usually roughly coincides with um, that. There's also, what's that um, African-American one? Kwanzaa, some sort of um, festival to celebrate family and community, things like that. So in the British Isles, people never say happy holidays. Um, so yeah, a holiday, another thing is, is in uh, Great Britain and Ireland, a holiday means um, a vacation, as in time when you have off, usually you go away from where it is you live. You vacate your place. Vacation's quite logical. But obviously a public holiday is something like New Year's Day, as in um, most workplaces and schools are closed that day. Um, obviously emergency services are functioning. Um, yeah, now, that thing about bless you, as in wishing you good health if you just um, coughed or sneezed. Uh, the other thing is, in the British Isles, people sometimes say bless, as in mm, they think something is adorable, someone, some child, an animal. Even these people aren't remotely religious, they are saying bless, not as a benediction. But it's women tend to say that more if they're feeling very sentimental. Um, ah, so, as we clink glasses saying cheers, as you're about to um, imbibe a spirituous liquor. Although in I Irish people say schlonter, literally health. Now in every European language I've heard of, apart from English, people wish each other health. No, actually remain to say norok, meaning luck. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, cheers can also mean thank you in um, British argo. And I used to think it was a working class thing, but I've heard actually quite pucker people say it, like an Oxford Don said it. Um, Okay, uh, Wellington boots, those are rubber boots. Um, supposedly the Duke of Wellington invented them so his, so his um, soldiers would not get their feet wet and therefore fever and all the rest of it. I know in the United States they're called galoshes, which is actually very similar to the Russian name for them. So Wellington boots, we often call them wellies, welly boots, things like that. In Australia they call them gum boots. I wonder why. Maybe because they're made out of rubber and they think that's almost the same as gum. Um, oh yeah, fishing pole. In the British Isles that's fishing rod. A pole, that's like a, a telephone pole. We don't, we don't have those anymore because we've got, we've got satellite phones. Sneakers in Ireland and Great Britain are called trainers, or in Ireland actually, some to call them runners, as in running shoes. Um, a, a sneaker, is that someone who's sneaky, who's sneaking around? Um, uh, okay, uh, we're saying Christian name, your first name, as in George in my case. That's first name in the United States, but I think I've done that one beforehand. All right, talking about track team in uh, Canada and the United States. Well, we probably say athletics team or possibly running team in the British Isles, but they're not necessarily just into running. They might be doing the long jump or something. Ah, what's that thing which floats on the water? It's a very um, eye-catching colour, such as um, infrared or more likely um, uh, bright pink, possibly um, this uh, amber colour, orange, something like that, inflated with air and often attached to ropes to signal don't come in here or don't swim further than there or even attached to the side of a, of a, of a ship. Uh, in the United States, that's buoy. But in British, it's boy, just like boy and girl. Although even though we spell it the same, B-U-O-Y. So Americans pronounce it closer to the original French, buée. Um, we've got buoyancy. I don't know if the United States people say buoyancy as well, not. We talk about being buoyed up. But buoyancy obviously meaning optimism and energy as well. Talking about front yard, backyard in the United States, in the British Isles, it's front garden, back garden. We don't have yard sales. I don't think we have garden sales either, but people do, we have garage sales. And notice we pronounce it garage rather than garage. Where you go to fill your car, I know in the United States that's gas station, 
in the British Isles, it's petrol station, sometimes filling station. Um, oh, what was I coming on to? Um, a garage sale, okay? But a garage can also mean a place where they repair cars, not necessarily just that room attached to your house where you might park your car and store some of your hardware. Oh, saying you're here in, a, in the United States. Well, I think that's brusque and unusual, but people don't say that one. Um, uh, we might say, we'd still say, do you hear or do you hear me? Even if we're being um, confrontational. Oh yeah, y'all. I think that's any from the southern part of the United States or particularly the erstwhile Confederacy. I remember um, a woman from the southern part of the United States saying to me, where y'all from? And the odd thing is it was a singular where she's addressing me individually, not a group. Nobody else was in the room. But um, I, I thought it was curious that the word all was there. Um, what well, we'd obviously say, where are you from in this case? I remember the late magnificent uh, Christopher Hitchens of uh, happy and glorious memory um, said he'd even heard y'all of y'all. Well, well, I suppose we'd have to say all of you. Well, I'm not sure we'd ever say you all. Um, ah, come back. Yeah, in Texas years ago, my parents had this one. My father leaving a shop, that's a store. And the shopkeeper, that's the storekeeper, I suppose, saying, you'll come back. And my father's saying, what, he thinks I haven't paid for something? Okay, I'll come back. No, no, you can go, but you'll come back. As in, we like you, so please shop here again in future. I, I noticed in Russia, people saying the same thing, yeah? Uh, as you're leaving the shop, the shop assistant wishing you'd return because you're such a welcome customer. Obviously, that's a, uh, a clerk in the United States. Now, C-L-E-R-K. But in British, that's pronounced clerk. We never call the person who works in the shop a clerk. He or she is the shop assistant. Clerk is a bit of an old fashioned word for a secretary, I suppose. But for example, the person who works behind the counter in a bank, we now say bank teller. We used to say bank clerk. Notably, uh, Saint Nigel Farage described, um, it was Herman van Rompuy, one of the EU's grand panjandrums as being, as having the appearance of a low grade bank clerk. Poor him. Ah, the number 10. Well, this is not, this is not standard American, but I had a colleague from Georgia. No, not the Republic of the, the state saying Tayan. Oh, and that was number 10. It, it um, tickled me pink that he was pronouncing it as two syllables. Um, let me see. Ah, route. That's in the way you're going to travel. Obviously, in America, it's pronounced route, R-O-U-T-E. But for us, route is a military defeat and the enemy's retreating in disorder. They're routed. We routed them. They are in route. Or indeed, we could be routed. And then as a verb, also... We have root. So for us, root as in root of a tree and root as in the direction of travel are pronounced exactly the same, even though they're spelt differently. Ah, now for us, row is what you do with a boat. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Isn't life a dream or something like that? But um, and we also have row, which is different. Row to rhyme with how and row to rhyme with no. So for us, row means a, um, a heated and noisy argument. I'm told in American English, row is both this uh, um, uh, unpleasant personal argument as well as um, rowing a boat. And I know in the United States people say a row boat. We would say a rowing boat. Now talk about permit. So for us, permit is um, like a license or something. And then there's to permit the verb with the emphasis on the second syllable was the noun permit has gone on the first I think in the United States there isn't that distinction, as in, well, there might be, the, there's always the verb of the noun, but I'm not sure that the um, accentuation shifts from the first to the second syllable. Another thing for us, license. In British English, the noun is L-I-C-E-N-C-E, -E, license. Whereas the verb to licensed, you are licensed, is with an S rather than a C in the, in the penultimate position. L-I-C-E-N-S-E, -E. Um, you are licensed, things like that, unlicensed. But as I, as I understand the United States, is with an S in both cases, the verb and the noun. Ah, uh, okay, jail. Now, in British, it's G-A-O-L-E-R. That's the old-fashioned spelling. But increasingly, people are using the American spelling. And a jailer used to be a person who works there. But and that's fallen into disuse. That was certainly Kenneth Graham wrote that one in The Wind of the Willows over a century ago. Um, penitentiary, don't use that one. And there's rather a big assumption that everyone there is penitent. Um, and the person in charge in the United States of, of a prison would be a warden. We, we don't say that. I mean, someone in charge of one of the colleges of Oxford University is a warden. Apart from that, we almost never use that word. Oh, we have traffic warden, the person seeing if you're parked in the wrong place. 
give you a fine. Um, correctional officers working in the United States, in the UK and Republic of Ireland, we call them prison officers. Colloquially, I might call them guards, warders. Warders a bit old fashioned, not warden, warder. Um, and uh, pejoratively, prisons used to call them screws. I don't think they call them that anymore. Um, a borstal, I don't think they call them that in the United States ever. I think there was a town called Borstal near London where they set up a, a prison for young criminals, trying to separate them from the adults. Like Borstal Boy, the novel by Brendan Behan. Um, and uh, then nowadays in the UK, it's called the Young Offenders Institute. They're called Young Offenders. We often call criminals offenders. Their crime is an offence or a criminal offence. We don't use the word felon, then I know in the United States they do. Um, what else? I remember a Clint Eastwood film talking about the juvie, as in the equivalent of the Young Offenders Institute. I'm not quite sure what it's called in the United States these days. Um, old fashioned British expressions for such matters had up before the magistrate. If you're had up in court, it means you have to go to court because you're accused of whatever crime. Magistrate is a low level judge um, dealing with petty crime, his or her sentencing powers up to two years maximum. And uh, so, uh, and then, then a beak, that's a, that's a slang word for a judge. It's not rude. Talking about the beak on the bench. I know in the United States, people say, still saying being on the bench, judges sit on the bench, as in they serve their period of time as a judge. So those are some rather random distinctions between these two forms of English which occurred to me over the past couple of days.